Just so you know. All right. Uh, well, we're here with Nick Alderman, um, a man that uh, is uh, known for the book that he uh, just wrote. Uh, when did you write this? A couple of years ago, probably? Uh, I wrote it the same year as the 25th anniversary was going on. Okay, so 2010, pretty much. Yeah. And was it released during the anniversary or, or, or after? Uh, well, it turned out to be after. I, I did not set out to write a book. I actually was just going to put down some ideas, some uh, memories that I had of my experiences and then just sort of have it available as a pamphlet during the uh, 25th anniversary. But then as I started writing, all of these I memories came flooding back and I was looking at my old call sheets and reading the screenplay and all of these things came flooding back. And okay. When I, when I was done, <laughs> I, I realized that it was much, much more than a pamphlet, so... I did a little checking around as far as what photos were available and found out there was a huge treasure trove of those socked away. They were still on the original negatives uh, in the vaults at the um, Historical Society. Okay. So it took several months for me to get all of those scanned and sorted through, uh, which meant that the book wasn't actually finished until October, which was several months after the celebration was over. Yeah, it seems like uh, it seems like a a really good book. The name of the book that I'm talking about is uh, Three Weeks with the Goonies on Location in Astoria, Oregon," written by none other than the guy who we're talking to right now, Nick Alderman. And I I bought it when I went to Astoria, Oregon here about two months ago or three months ago in in May, and I simply enjoyed it. It was uh, I, I wanted when I seen it there, I bought it at the uh, the video store that's in, in town or whatever that's in Astoria, Oregon, one of the only video stores that I seen over there when I was there, and uh, yeah, I, I I definitely wanted to pick it up because the price was just right, and and I uh, it's kind of funny because you know the reason why I picked it up too was not just because of being a fan of the Goonies, but also just because of the fact that uh, uh, even though we've never met before, but I I. I've seen you before, you know, like, not in person, but there was a YouTube video that was released, I don't think it was purposely to go on YouTube, but uh, back in 2007, before I even went on my first trip to Astoria in 2008, uh, HGTV did a special on uh, Hollywood Homes, and I remember seeing you and Jim Fuller and also Sandy Preston uh, do uh, as part of that little uh, feature anyway. Yeah, they did quite a lengthy interview with me, but as I recall, they only used a couple of seconds of it. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that. It was a big piece, but uh, but I remember seeing that, and I was like, man, you know, one day I, I gotta meet this guy because you know he he has the same. It seems like he has the same inspiration as I do, except he's actually getting somewhere, and I'm just still in Minnesota here doing uh, crappy jobs, pretty much. <laughs> well, I got a few years on you. Yeah, yeah, you do. Uh, but uh, like, how did that? Uh, how did that whole thing uh, become? You know, like, how did they get uh, hooked up with you and everything to do that? The interview, you mean? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. They called me. I, I'm sure they probably came to town and spoke to someone, saying, you know, who could we interview uh, about the Goonies' house. And someone, I'm sure, gave them my name. It was several years ago, so I don't recall exactly who it was. Sure. And, uh, but now, uh, before we we start talking about your book and stuff, you would you like to let people know kind of kind of your story, like like how was it for you growing up in Astoria, Oregon, and and how did you get to where you're at right now? Um. Well, I'm. I've been in Astoria my whole life. My dad was born here. In fact, I'm living in the house that my dad was born in. Uh, my parents live in the house my great-grandfather built, so there's a lot of alderman history in Astoria. Uh, filmmaking for me grew out of cartooning back in 
the 70s, I used to draw comics and read comics and all of that sort of thing, and discovered I had a knack for t telling stories with pictures. Sure. But at the time, back then, nobody really paid any attention to behind the scenes of movies. Nobody really knew what movies were. You just, they were just something that you went and saw on a big screen, but you never gave any thought to exactly what you were looking at. And then I saw a documentary uh, on PBS about a little boy, same age as me at the time, who was making movies on Super 8. Uh-huh. Animated movies, stop-motion animation movies. And it showed exactly how he did it, taking one frame of film and how when you projected them in series at the correct speed, it gave the illusion of movement. And suddenly my world opened up. I could, I could create these pictures, stories, and they would actually move and have sound and everything else. So I was hooked then. And then I saw, in 1977, I saw a movie called Star Wars that absolutely <laughs> transcended anything that had ever come before. Um, it's, it's difficult to imagine uh, for younger people who grew up with Star Wars already being in the world, but uh, at the time that it came out, it was... Nobody had ever seen anything like it. It just blew all of our minds. And uh, and two, I suppose, you know, with that being a really good movie for special effects, I mean, Star Wars, man. I mean, that's that's one of those films that, you know, nobody thought would probably ever exist. But you know that it, it definitely changed uh, the films as we see them now, anyway. Yeah, well, there had been, prior to Star Wars, there had been, movies like Forbidden Planet and other things like that with special effects and that took place in space and on other planets um, and things like uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey but Star Wars was a complete immersion in a whole new world that didn't exist and uh, really nothing like that had ever been done I mean the closest really probably had been The Wizard of Oz Pure, yeah. but, uh, but Star Wars was just something completely new and it, you know the special effects techniques that were used in it were created for it and you know many of them are still in use even in the, in the digital age yeah so it was it changed everything and blew my mind and I decided okay I have to figure out how this is done well and, and that's that's kind of I suppose where we get to the point of the book too I suppose uh, because you know it it really explained itself more or less uh uh, or your theory, uh, or pretty much of what happened, or what it was like when you uh, took part in the... You weren't filmed in the movie, but you were you got to kind of be behind the scenes, more or less. Got to do, got to hang out with Richard Downer, and, and got to do be like his... What was it, like, not production guy, but like... What were you... What, what, what can you say your job role was? I, I was not... I did not have a job. Um, okay. As I say in the book, I was given the opportunity... To work for the production. Okay, that's what not, it was. It would have been in a capacity that would have been off the set. Okay. And what I was most interested in was standing by, you know, while this yeah one of the big biggest directors in the world directed one of the biggest movies in the world. <laughs> I wanted to be there while it was happening and, and see how it was done. So, uh, like, okay, you're it's a, it's a 1984. And you're you're young, you're you're eighteen, nineteen years old. Uh, like, uh, what was the feeling like? Like, I know you talk about it in the book, but like, like even be even before you, the book idea even happened, like, what was the like the, the feeling in the town of Astoria, Oregon, knowing the fact that a big movie or or, or Steven Spielberg or Richard Donner are, are going to come make a, a movie in your town? Well, The Goonies was really the first movie of that size to spend that much time and money in Astoria. I mean, other films have been shot here, but usually only just bits and pieces, and they just kind of came in for a couple of days and left. And then The Goonies came. Since The Goonies, there have been half a dozen big movies coming yeah. down. So yes, there has. It's not as big a deal as it was then, but at the time, it was the big deal. And it was there, That's all anybody talked about. And particularly for someone like me who, you know, absolutely was champing at the bit to see anything, I would just camp out and look for trucks and 
<laughs> yeah? Scan, scan the newspaper for any, you know, even the tiniest bit of information about the movie. Well, yeah, you know, I, you know, it's, it's kind of funny because you know, I was born in 1983. You know, pretty much a year before the the film was even, you know, getting filmed and everything. And and you know, and back in those days, you know, the, the lifestyles were different. You know, people were different. They dressed different. You know, things were cheaper and stuff like that. What do you think the the Goonies would have been like had they have been filmed today rather than 26 or 27 years ago? Movie or the I, I'm just talking the whole idea. Like, say if, uh, say if they waited till to come to Astoria till about now, till like right now, and, and it was filmed there. What do you think? It, or how do you think it would have felt like today if it would have been filmed today rather than? You mean as an Astorian? Yeah. Uh, well, like I say, considering there have been so many movies here since the Goonies. Uh, it probably wouldn't create as big a stir okay. as it did at the time. Um, although, again, having Spielberg's name, I mean, Spielberg is as big or bigger now than he was then, and he was huge then. Yeah. And it was just his name, basically, that got, because nobody knew what a Goonie was. Nobody oh, had of course not. That, and they weren't, you know, the film company wasn't going to tell what a Goonie was, and that was the big secret. So it was just basically... The Steven Spielberg movie, even though Steven Spielberg wasn't even directing it, he wasn't even in town for yep. most of it. Um, but just having his name attached to it was, yep. you know, got everybody's attention. Wow. No, I mean, you know, and that's what, you know, like, like, that's why I, you know, was happy to get a chance to go to Astoria, especially this time around back in May, because, you know, I went to, uh, four years ago in 2008, uh, had a chance to go. And I had a good time then, but but going back the second time, it really, I really got to appreciate that town more or less because it looks like a, a type of town that I could see myself living in. You've lived there pretty much most of your, pretty much all your life, and and you know I, I remember uh, it was kind of funny because uh, when I met one of Jim Fuller's daughters, uh, for people who don't know who Jim Fuller is, well we can explain about that probably later. Uh, Met one of his daughters that state that kind of was visiting with him at the time, because uh, uh, he lives in you know, pretty much in Dana's house and everything, and she was kind of surprised that I would actually want to come up here, or, or go there, uh, you know, come all the way from Minnesota just to come see the Goonie house or, or experience a Goonie's uh, adventure myself, more or less. Well, that's surprising because <laughs> uh, that I mean, people have come much, much further than that. Yeah. Yeah, and I have to say it does it does surprise us who live here, those of us who live here who, yeah. you know, we're not who are older when the movie came out, so we didn't really appreciate it in the same way that people who see it at the right age do. Have you uh, have you pretty much gotten a chance to meet everybody who was a part of the film? I mean, overall, even if if not back in the day, uh, even now with the anniversaries and everything. met everybody on the set. I mean, it's okay. there every day for three weeks. So. Okay. Well, you know, like, you know, like sometimes they, you know, it depends on, you know, how busy they are. I know you, you explained it in the book and everything, but like sometimes, you know, some people are too limited on their time or whatever, so you know what I mean. <laughs> well, primarily the young actors. The yeah. The young actors were, if they weren't on the, on the set shooting, they were in school. Sure. Uh, that's a requirement of the labor laws. So they had no time, basically, during the shoot to just chit-chat with anybody um, because they they were limited to working four hours a day. And when you consider, you know, they're shooting 10 to 12 hours, that's only a third of the day. So, yeah. And they're in most of the scenes. So they had to get them up to the set when the, as soon as the camera was ready, roll film. As soon as they call cut, they were back down to the, to the trailer. So there was no, no chit chatting with yeah. the younger actors. But the crew people were there all the time. So oh, yeah, sure. I, I knew all of them. I mean, did you have, did you actually get a chance to hang out with Richard Donner at all, or was that just uh, that one time that you, you know, that you uh, asked oh, no, him? No, I, I had several conversations with him. Okay. Uh, he, um, in fact, he. 
we exchanged letters for a couple of years after he was here, but then he did um, the Lethal Weapon, the first Lethal Weapon movie, and it catapulted him into superstar. I mean, he was already a big director, but yeah. put him uh, at the top of the list, and, and after that I couldn't get past his, um, <laughs> his uh, assistance anymore. He became too big of a star. <laughs> yeah, and then he forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, well, so what's the acting thing? I mean, uh, did you ever try, like, like, after the Goonies were filmed there, to try to, like, get into filming as far as, like, doing movies? Uh, as far as acting? Like, when you were young? Um, I've never stopped making movies. Uh... Both as director and actor, uh, I've done a lot of plays too. Plays are, are much easier yeah. to do and much cheaper. So I've done a lot of theater. No, what what I'm what I'm talking about is like uh, like after the Goonies were filmed. Like I know, like I because I, I know you have that that movie on Amazon that you made. But I'm talking like when you were younger, like to to try to get into like to send your tape or something like that or resume to the. You know, to another Hollywood director or whatever, or a film company to see if you could be like a, in, a, in a lead role or even just be a part of it at all. That's what I'm talking about. Well, in order to get into the industry, you pretty much have to have an agent. Okay. And uh, living in Astoria is pretty tough to get an agent. I uh, had to move to L.A., which, you know, was something that was on my radar. Uh, I ended up making a film two years after the Goonies that got me a job with a production company in Portland in 1987. Portland is only 100 miles yeah. from Astoria, so I Couple was living in Portland for a year. Um, and uh, then that job ended, and I came back up to Astoria, and I got offered a job at the college down here, which I ended up taking. And then I was there for 23 and a half years. Okay. So I eliminated my position. Uh, and so right now I'm Actually, trying to. I'm actually. I actually do have a manager down in Los Angeles right now. So okay. I'm very likely going to be going down there. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, my buddy and I, when we went to Astoria, where we were looking for the. Because I thought I knew where. I thought I could remember where the Astoria column was, and we ended up taking like a a wrong direction. Or whatever, but we went. To, well, I've seen your college that you went to. I actually, it's like up on that hill, upon all the hills that there are in Astoria, or got almost. Makes it seem like you're in San Francisco, almost like. That's the feeling yeah. I always get. <laughs> yeah, well, people do call it the, the miniature San Francisco. Yeah, and uh, I saw the college. It, it looks pretty pretty huge, you know. It almost looks like a big old high school, almost like. Well, it was. It was the original Astoria High School. Oh. For, until it was, the building was condemned in, I think, 1957. Okay. Um, but then they kind of put it back together just well enough so it was no longer condemned with the idea that they would rebuild it someday and uh, fast forward 40 years later <laughs> yeah. and they finally finally did. So was that a pretty good school to, to attend as far as for what you wanted to do? The college? Yeah. A, well, yeah, I didn't attend it for 23 years. I worked there yeah. for 23 years, but I'm also a graduate of it. And yeah, at the time they actually had uh, this would have been mid-80s. They had a television and film production program there. Okay. That no longer exists. I was one of the last graduates of it. It was too expensive to sustain. Yeah, over uh, in my area where I live in Minnesota, the closest to any type of radio or video school was a, a college called uh, Northland Community, Community and Technical College in Thief River Falls, which is only like 40 miles from where I live, and that's where I attended to uh, do radio for, well, it was supposed to only be a year, but then I volunteered for about five years, so I I, I also have a little history of the the broadcasting or, like, the entertainment type of thing, you know, when it comes to college, and I, and that's kind of why I, I, I love doing interviews like this, because it's kind of where I learned all that stuff from, you know. Right. But, uh, so anyway, uh, let's talk about the book some more because I want to I want to make sure people know about the book and everything because it, it really is a good read and and for anybody that you know loves a good adventure or loves you know a true story or loves just the fact that you know to see uh, photos that you would not normally see anywhere else even online uh, 
this is the perfect book. My three weeks with the Goonies. Uh, just, I don't know, like, what, what made you, like, I think I asked you earlier, but, like, uh, uh, what kind of just gave you the inspiration to finally say, you know what, it's been 25 years, I have to write this? Well, like I say, I didn't sit down to write a book. Um, I had been telling various anecdotes from the shoot over the years since the time that they did it. Just, you know, in yeah. conversation, one would come up, oh, I remember this time when I was on the Goonies. Uh, but it wasn't until I sat down and, and with the intention of writing a pamphlet just you know, for the amusement of people who attended the 25th anniversary that I realized exactly how many of those I had. Sure. So uh, it was just basically in the process of writing that I realized, holy cow, this is a book. This is not a pamphlet. Yeah. This is something that maybe somebody else would like to see, and, you know, you get this bad boy published, and let's see what happens, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, actually, I self-published it. Okay. Uh, I didn't I didn't feel like, I mean, I probably could have gone around to publishers and stuff, but I'm not a writer, I'm a filmmaker. Yeah. So I just decided the heck with it, I'm just going to, you know, forego all of the, you know, contacting publishers and sending out manuscripts and all that. I just go ahead and self-publish it because I'm not in it to make money from it. I yeah. Just, you know, it was just something that I did that I thought, well, I might as well put it out there and see if people like it. And so far, they seem to. So, it's, it, you know, even though it's not so much about the money, but has, has it gone pretty good for you or as far as people like writing your letters say, hey, you know, this is actually a pretty good read? Actually, I don't think I've gotten any letters. Um, okay. But uh, a couple of people said some nice things about it on Amazon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I intentionally priced it low. Um, sure. Because, again, it wasn't, I'm not out to, to make money on it. Um, and I wanted anybody, you know, who was interested in it to be able to afford their own copy as opposed to, you know, I figured, well, they can either come to story and, you know, pay $50 for this book and then loan it to all their friends. Yeah. Or they can buy five copies. And sure. With their friends. And I'd rather they did that. So what was the actual official release date of when you actually released this? I released it on October 22nd, I believe, of 2010, uh, intentionally uh, timing it so that it came out on the same day as the first day of shooting. First oh. day of shooting was October 22nd. That's right, yeah. I guess I didn't so even think about that, yeah. Yeah, so I, we did that intentionally. Okay, wow. Just for fun. Did it take you a long time to, to get it done, or was it just something that you you knew all the information? and? Well, yeah, it took time because, like I say, the, the, uh, I believe the celebration, 25-year celebration was in June. Yep. And uh, I believe I started writing about April, thinking, well, I'll have a couple of months to come up with this pamphlet. Um, you know, just this little informational thing, so I got plenty of time. But then, of course, it just grew and grew and grew. And then sure. by June, I knew there was absolutely no way I was going to have it finished for the release date. So I said, the heck with it. I'm just going to sit down and work really hard on it and make sure it's really nice. And then, of course, I had the idea of, oh, I wonder if there's photos around that I can use. And like I say, discovered sure. literally thousands of, of old newspaper photographs that were just stashed on, on the original negatives in the vaults at the Historical Society. So uh, the um, guy at the Historical Society, Sam, who was helping me out, told me where all this stuff was, and they just started bringing out boxes and boxes and boxes of these photos of these negatives. So I had to go through you know, strips of six negatives, box loads of them. So that took a long, long time. And then once I picked the ones that I thought I might want to use, then I had to go down there, and we had to scan them with a high-resolution computer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we'd have photos for the <laughs> I suppose it was it turned so into a pretty big project, I'm sure. sure. It turned in, yeah, yeah, obviously. And so um, I think I finished it about late September, early October, something like that. And then, uh, so sent it in to Create Space to okay. publish. Ah, uh, yeah, Create Space. So I suppose you you were never like I, I know you know like you said it wasn't about the money but 
I suppose it would have surprised the hell out of you if it would have made, like, New York Times bestseller for a week or so, whatever. <laughs> well, I think they only, I don't think they cover self-published stuff. Oh, okay. You know, had I, had I taken the time to go and find a publisher, who knows, maybe I would have, maybe I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, but I didn't even bother to try. Just, well, you was, know... That was not my focus. You, you, you put together a good piece no matter what, and you know what, you can look down, you can look at this years down the road and say, you know what... If anything, I'm proud of what I've accomplished thus far, and to even write one book, let alone any book, you know, I think that's a that's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. Yeah, and then uh, what I want to ask you now uh, is uh, uh, back in 2007. Also, I you know got the chance to interview two guys who kind of in a way also helped put Astoria on the map internet wise and I know I think you have an idea who I'm talking about Ron Fugelseth and Pat Radcliffe obviously you know those guys pretty well <laughs> oh I think you're I think you're oh there we go lose you. yeah a little bit <laughs> but you heard yeah, what yeah, I yes I know yeah yeah of course I know Ron and Pat yeah they, they contacted me back way back when they were doing their uh, documentary did they did they know you back then? I mean, like like uh, back to when they first made their trip, the first vacation video. No, no, I I didn't know them. They didn't know me. They the first vacation video. I think they just came into town and shot it. And, uh, okay. Went back home and then were amazed at the attention that it got and decided, well, you know, let's parlay this into something bigger. Yeah. Which they did, and at, at that point, again, they came into town, kind of like the other group, and said, you know, who's Who's in town that, that would know about the Goonies production? Somebody gave them my name, but I don't know. <laughs> well, hey, got your got you noticed a little bit because they they put your piece on the documentary. I actually have a an autographed copy of the documentary, the uh, the untold story of uh, or the uh, what was it called? Untold story or the unofficial documentary? Unofficial, yeah. yeah, of the Goonies. And uh, anyway. With Ron and Pat, I, I interviewed them back when I was actually on the radio at uh, 9.1 KSRQ in the river in February, I think it was February of 2007. And believe it or not, they were actually the guys who actually inspired me to even decide to, to take my first trip to Astoria. Had they had I not have talked to them, I probably wouldn't have even done it. Yeah, I think they've uh, done a lot for tourism in Astoria. They, uh, they deserve props for that. Yeah, I saw their piece that they did at the uh, at the Liberty Theater. Uh, you know, they they weren't showing it when I was there at the Liberty Theater, but uh, from the documentary, from the bonus features and everything, uh, it looked like uh, they were. It, it made it seem like they were like the next big Hollywood uh, filmmakers or whatever when it came to the documentary because of how many people recognized who they were, or just because of the anniversary itself in 2010. Yeah, I'm not sure that's their focus. I think you know they have their own business that's very successful sure. down in California, so I don't think, uh, you know, that sort of filmmaking is, is what they're intending to pursue, but yeah, they, you know, they had great success with it. I'm sure they were surprised at, of the turnout, at least, you know, the fact that they were getting that type of attention anyway, even if it wasn't their desire, just the fact that there are people that recognize that, hey, you know, these are the guys that put together this cool little piece, we got to thank them for them at least. But, uh, well, anyway, there, Mick, I, I want to say thank you, you know, because I know you've been really busy. You've been working on your, your film. Uh, uh, I forget what it's called. What's it called again? Cribs. Cribs, yeah, okay. You want to talk about that a little bit before we let you go? Sure, yeah. Uh, Cribs is uh, actually finished, and it's searching for distribution right now, so it's sort of out of my hands. Okay. Um but it's a uh, it's a supernatural thriller and it's set and shot in Astoria oh. and it uses a lot of the history of Astoria um, history slash folklore of Astoria and uh, its reputation as a Shanghai port. Okay. Uh, which, if you don't know what Shanghai is, I'm, it's, uh, I'm when I think of Shanghai, I think of Shanghai Nights of the Jackie Chan movie or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, Shanghaiing is a term that was adopted uh, to refer to the, conscri the illegal uh, conscription of young men 
as sailors at the turn of the 20th century and uh, you know, a couple of decades prior to that. Uh, because of the sailing ships, the conditions on sailing ships, uh, sailors you know, were often washed overboard or died in transit or ran away when they went to a port, and so the ships were in constant need of new men. Sure. And so the ship captains would pay what was called a crimp huh. to kidnap a young man off the street and render him unconscious, uh, either by drugging him or assaulting him. Wow. Uh, bring him onto the ship, and then by the time the, the young man woke up, the ship would be out at sea, and he'd have no choice but to work the voyage. <laughs> well, so, so it, well, Crimps, okay. the movie Crimps is, takes place in modern day, but it has a supernatural element that refers back to that practice. Wow. Which Astoria was, was well known for, as was San Francisco. So are you going to, when it, when it officially gets released, are you going to show it at the Liberty Theater, or, or how are you going to do this? For, for, for uh, It was actually screened at the Liberty last September. Oh, uh, there were a couple of screenings, one for the cast and crew and one for just... No, what, what, oh, so, well, you said it was done, so, so, how long has it been done for them? Oh, probably lost you again. <laughs> oh, here we go. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I finished it, you know, roughly a year ago. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. But it takes a while for it to go through the process of oh, I'm sure. distribution because there are a lot of distributors out there and they take their time yeah. in uh, viewing things and you can only send it to so many at once. So uh, when it comes to your, your filmmaking and stuff, uh, pretty much my last question, like what do you, what, what's your goal as far as, because it seems like a lot of people when they do fun projects and stuff, you know, they have a goal of what they want to accomplish in their career and, and what's your goal when it comes to the the filmmaking and acting and pretty much everything that you've accomplished. What do you want out of everything that you've accomplished? Well, I'd just like to be able to make a living as a filmmaker. Okay. Uh, I think my strength is as a director, but I'm also a writer. And my manager represents me as a writer-director in, in L.A. Um, but, you know, any way to, to make a living in the industry would be fine with me. Okay. Yeah, that would be, that's the ultimate goal, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, you know, if, if that's your passion, then sure. clearly it's mine, because I've been doing it since the late 70s, so I've been at it for a few years. All right, well, I, I tell you what, I want to say thank you for letting me do this interview with you. I know you've been really busy, and for you to find the time, I do appreciate it, so. Well, thank you. Yeah, and uh, please, everybody, check out the book, Three Weeks with the Goonies. You will not be disappointed. It's available on Amazon. I'll put the Amazon link down to down below the link or whatever in the YouTube okay, video. Um, they can also uh, go to my website, 2001productions.com, and buy it through there. And I actually get a, it's the same price either way. And it's shipped from the same place, but I, I get a better uh, percentage. Amazon okay. takes a huge cut. Oh, I'm sure, <laughs> they yeah. Through Amazon. But if they buy it through 2001productions.com, then I get a little more. Okay. The price is the same for the, either way. Well, that sounds great. We want to help you as much as we can. You know, you're you putting together a good pro, or, you know, project. I mean, you, you know, you, you want to get a little something out of it, too, even, even if it's not a big big chunk. You know? <laughs> right. I appreciate it. All right. All right, man. I, I stopped the recording there. <laughs> All right. I stopped the recording, so...